Hello and welcome back. Uh, today's video we're going to take a look at the brand new gyro sensor that's included in the EV3 kit. Uh, the gyro sensor is the one with the arrows on top. I think you can see it there. I've got this mounted high above the uh, Steve bot facing forward. Uh, the gyro sensor is going to give us a heading on what direction we're going. Um, it, it looks out and it will tell us in um, degrees which direction we're heading. Um, normally we'd want to use this in a way where zero degrees is always straight ahead and 180 degrees is always behind us and then to the right is positive 90 to the left is negative 90. So that kind of gives you an idea of how it uses that. Just think of a big protractor, if you've laid it on the table, point zero straight ahead and you can see how the degrees are laid out left and right and behind you based on the protractor. So that's what we're going to use this for. And like I said, this is a brand new sensor to the EV3 kit, haven't used this one before. And today we're going to take a first look at it, so let's see what it'll do. Okay, before we get started with the software, I'd like for us to take a look at the port view so we can see what the readout for the gyro sensor looks like. And you can see that when I've pulled into port view, in port one, I have our gyro sensor installed. And as I move the bot around, you can see if I go to this direction, I'm going at negative. If I go this direction, I'm getting a positive readout. This sensor will give readouts in um, two different formats. It will give us a, uh, a numeric heading, like I just showed you, or it will give us a rate of change. Um, for this video, since we're just getting started, we're going to continue looking at only the, um, the heading. The reason you'd use the gyro sensor is um, to help with some turns and to help with directions. So let's say uh, that you're going to program the robot to go straight ahead and then you want to um, do a left hand turn. Well, you could program the motors to do a certain number of degrees to complete the turn or we can tell the gyro sensor if we're going forward at zero degrees to do a turn for negative 90 on the gyro sensor and it would turn until it loses 90 degrees heading. Same thing for a right hand turn. We can move forward and tell the bot to turn until it sees an increase of 90 degrees in the gyro sensor and it should give us a right hand turn um, without having to calculate the number of, of motor rotations. The same thing would go if we wanted to turn the bot all the way around. Instead of calculating the number of rotations in the, the wheel motors to turn the bot around, we could just say turn until you see a change in direction of 180 and that would accomplish pretty much the same thing. One thing I need to tell you about before we start programming is the fact that whenever you first plug in the gyro sensor, um, from what I've read, you need to make sure that you power the bot all the way down and when you turn the power back on, it needs to be hands off because as it boots up, it recalibrates the gyro sensor and everything needs to be perfectly level and perfectly still so it gets a good reading on the gyro sensor. So when you go to attach your gyro sensor, like I have, go ahead and find a way to mount it, get it wired up. I've got mine wired up into port one. And then once you've got it wired up, power the brick all the way down, set it on the table, power it on, and then hands off until it's completely booted up. So if you'll remember that, I think you'll get more consistent readouts. And let's go to the software and see if we can make a program. Okay, so here we are in the uh, Mindstorms EV3 software, and I've created a new project called Gyro Test, and we're gonna test out this gyro sensor, see if we can make it do something. What I want to do first is draw your attention to our port view, and you'll see that there are, uh, again, still three motors plugged in. We have the two large motors plugged into port A and B, and the medium-sized motor plugged into port C. And if you look down here in port one, we now have the gyro sensor plugged in. And I'm gonna move that around on the table and you can see that we're getting a live readout based on the heading that the bot is facing. Let's see if I can spin it around and zero it out. There we go, so that's pretty close to zero right there. And so I can find zero this way or I can reset the gyro sensor. And let me show you how that's gonna be done. We're gonna use the gyro sensor block pull it right up here in the timeline and choose to reset. If I go ahead and try to run this program with the bot plugged in via USB, watch what happens to the readout in the port panel. It resets the value to zero. Let me move the bot so you can see it again. Watch how that value of 46 or 47 right there resets after I run the program. 
and it resets it to zero. Now already I'm a little concerned that this number is moving and I can look at my bot right next to the computer and it's not going anywhere. So I'm trying to figure out why the gyro value is moving when the bot clearly is not. But um, I'm going to reset again and see what happens. Well, we're gonna keep our eye on that. I'm not sure why, but um, we're going to go ahead and try a move here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do every time I run the program is reset the gyro to zero so it knows that straight ahead is going to be zero. So we're going to move straight ahead. We're going to turn our motors on for uh, two rotations at 50% power. That's going to give us a little bit of forward movement. And then we're going to initiate a turn right after that. And this one is going to be based on our gyro sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn both of those motors on. And motor A, I'm going to give a 50% power rating. And on motor B, I'm going to turn that off so we get kind of a pivot turn. And we're going to run that in the on position until, and anytime you say until, that means there's going to be a weight block following it. So um, the weight block is going to be tied to the gyro sensor. And we're going to look for a certain degree of change in the gyro sensor. So with this in gyro change mode, I'm going to look for an increase of 90 degrees. So let's take a look here. We're resetting the gyro to zero. We're going to move forward and then we're going to initiate a turn and it's going to turn until we've added 90 to the value of the gyro sensor and then we'll stop the motors. It's the off block here. Again, real simple program. We're going to reset the value, move forward, turn until we see an increase of 90 from the gyro sensor and then stop. So that should give us a 90 degree turn. Based on what I've chosen here, motor A or B, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a left turn or right turn, but there's one way to find out. Let's send it and run it. All right, so I'm ready to run this program. We're going to line it up here on the line. The first thing we're gonna do is reset the gyro. So that direction is zero degrees. We're gonna move forward for, I think it was two rotations. And then we're gonna initiate a turn and it's gonna wait for the gyro sensor to increase by 90 and then we'll stop the motor. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Okay, so that was a right turn. So we know whenever we get ready to program now that 90 is gonna be a right hand turn and I'm assuming that negative 90 is going to be a left hand turn. We'll try that out in a minute. Let me line this up again and see how accurate it is. So I'm gonna start right on these lines here and go. All right, so it looks to me like it's overturning a little bit. Um, I would think that that right there is 90 degrees and it was right about there, which I would guess is like 92, 93, 95 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, not sure why that is. I'm gonna run it from a different direction and now this way is going to be zero degrees and it should turn this way for 90 and we'll see how that's affected. Let me scoot this back so we can get the whole thing in the shot and let's run this program. Yep, yeah, sure enough, um, it looks like it's over rotating again because I thought that right there would be 90 degrees and it over rotated. Let's try this one more time and here we go. Okay, so it's over rotating. Um, let's go back to the software and see if we can figure something out. Okay, so we're back in the software and I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that if we were to swap these two values, or if we were just to simply put a negative in front of this 90 degrees, we would get a, a turn in the other direction. Uh, but we'll stick with this for now. What I want to look at is the problem we were experiencing with the over rotation. The best I can guess, it's one of two reasons. Um, one would be tied to this problem here where I see this value creeping down um, like one degree per second. I'm not sure if that's a problem in the software or a problem in the brick, but it could also be a problem in the fact that, um, you know, as this motor is turning, it's checking every second to update itself on what the degrees are from the sensor. And there's just a little bit of a lag in between the time where the motors are moving and that the sensor is reporting back and forth. There's just a lot going on there. And so I'm suspecting that there may be like a half second lag in the reporting from this sensor. So what I'm gonna do is just take off a few degrees. So instead of turning 90 degrees, which gives us the over rotation, 
I'm just going to try something like um, 82 degrees, and that would help compensate for the, the lag between the sensor and the brick and the motors. So just as a short little experiment, let's run that at 82 degrees and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and send this, and we'll check my theory. All right, so we've adjusted our gyro value from 90 down to 82, and that's going to help compensate for any lag that we have uh, between the signal going from the gyro sensor into the brick and then affecting the brake on the motor. So let's just run that and see what we get. I'm hoping it'll help at least. All right, that to me looks like a 90 degree turn. Let's run it again, see how it does. Remember, as soon as I hit run on the brick, we're zeroing out the gyro reading and starting from zero. And then um, we're gonna run it 82 degrees to the right. All right, I like that. So maybe um, from now on, when we intend to do a 90 degree turn, maybe we should just turn it 82. So before we jump back in the software, I did want to check one thing real quick. You know, we noticed those numbers that were creeping down in the gyro readout. I want to make sure that it's actually not the brick's fault. So I'm going to scroll over here to port view again. And this is going to give us that live readout for the gyro. And I'm just going to let it sit for just a second and see if those numbers are changing at all. Okay, so sure enough, I can see that the values are decreasing like one degree per second. And that tells me that this, the problem may not be with the software on my computer. It actually may be with the way that the gyro sensor is reporting. So I'm just gonna keep that in mind. And for now, we'll just compensate with that 82 degrees instead of a 90 um, for our turns. Let's go back to the software because I think I have another way of testing that theory. Okay, so we're plugged back in and I'm going to keep an eye down here on our port view and I can see that our value is still creeping down, but I'm going to try not to let that bother me for now. Um, my theory is that if we um, use 82 value instead of 90 degrees value, we're going to get a 90 degree turn. So I'm going to assume that the delay in reporting is worth 8 degrees from the gyro sensor. So to test that theory, what I want to do is um, extrapolate that out to a 180 degree turn. So I would take 180 and subtract the 8 degree error, which would give me a 172 value for a 180 degree turn. And there's only one way to find out if that's going to work or not, and that's to send it and run it. All right, so now we're ready to test out the 180 degree turn. I'm going to set the bot here up in line. The front wheels are gonna be backed up to this black line here, and that should give us a pretty good start here. The first thing that will happen when I push run is to reset the gyro value to zero, and we should see a 180 degree turn even though we're only turning for 172 degrees according to the gyro sensor. Okay, that's pretty accurate. I like that a lot. Let's try it from a different angle. We'll try it from over here. It'll line it up with this line on the mat. We'll run it, see how it does. Excellent, so that's a great 180 degree turn. There's one more test I wanna do. If that number is correct, by subtracting the eight degrees from the gyro sensor, and it worked for 90 and it worked for 180, let's see what happens when we compound that times four. All right, so we're back in the software, and sure enough, I'm just gonna have to remember that this 172 value on the gyro sensor is, looks like it's going to consistently give us a 180 degree turn, so I'm just gonna keep that in mind. Um, this next test I wanna do is I'm gonna run a square pattern on the mat. That's going to require us to run four perfectly executed 90 degree turns. So I remembered that 82 degrees was the number I used for a 90 degree turn. So I'll move that back there. And if I'm going to run a uh, square pattern, basically I can just go forward, turn, stop, go forward, turn, and stop, go forward, and do that for four times. Um, I don't want necessarily to have to write a really long program. So what I'm going to do is simply put all of this that I have inside of a loop. And the loop is in our flow control palette. And it's this right here. Let me drag this up into our programming area and then I'm going to simply select all of the blocks that I have in place and put them inside the loop. And I want to run this using count and we'll run that four times. So basically it's gonna run this program that I just tested earlier four times in a row, which should give us a perfect square and we should end up where we left off. 
So I'm going to send this program and we'll see how we do. All right, so now we're ready to run our looped program. I will set up our butt right here in the corner. And what I'm expecting to see is our program run four times in that loop. So we should go here, do a 90 degree turn, this direction, 90 degree turn, and so on until we get back here at the beginning. I'm hoping that that 82 degrees is gonna work for us times four. So let's run it and find out. All right, not perfect, but it got pretty close. I'm gonna set it up starting from here this time and reset the gyro so it's facing this way at zero degrees right off the bat and see if this makes any difference. All right, again, close, but not perfect but you get the idea of how the sensor is going to work. Okay, I gotta admit, that was pretty frustrating. Um, I really wanted to love this sensor, and I really wanted it to be perfect, but um, 90 degrees today just wasn't 90 degrees. Um, 82 was close, but in some cases, it wasn't totally accurate either. We're gonna leave the video here today, but I can guarantee you one thing. I'm gonna keep working on this, and there may be a part two of this video coming soon, because I wanna to get to the bottom of why this gyro sensor isn't as accurate as I'd love for it to be. There's gotta be a way to figure that out, and I'm gonna get on it. But I do hope this video was helpful. You can get your gyro mounted and try it. Who knows, you may get to the solution before I do, and if so, make sure to let me know.